Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Prince Harry reportedly chose not to be in the same room as Queen Camilla during his visit to King Charles following the announcement of the King's cancer diagnosis. According to journalist Petronella Wyatt, a friend of Camilla's, Harry, I hear, preferred not to be in the same room with his stepmother when he spoke to the King about his cancer diagnosis. Camilla's friend Fiona Shelburne, Lady Lansdowne, mentioned that Harry's allegations have caused Camilla pain, stating, Of course it bothers her, of course it hurts, but she doesn't let it get to her. Her philosophy is always, don't make a thing of it and it will settle down. Least said, soonest mended. Royal expert Robert Jobson suggested that the brevity of Harry's visit was influenced by the king's health condition. He remarked, you don't want his blood pressure going up. The king's not very well. Whatever type of cancer it is, he's undergoing treatment. The best thing for him is to remain calm. After the initial kiss and hug, love you, dad, hope you get better soon. What issues are going to get raised? Things that will get your blood pressure rising. Meghan has issued a statement in response to criticism over the controversial new Sussex website. It reads, There is a reason I have worked with Ryan and the talented team at Article for a decade. Their attention to detail, their creativity and care, and the thoughtful approach to design as well as to the user experience, the Duchess said in a statement on the Article website. They're not just designers, they are collaborators who elevate your ideas into visual identities. They're a very special company, plus they're Canadian, so I'm a fan. The Mail quoted a source as saying, They are going to have real trouble with the use of Sussex. It is a royal title, and if there is any hint of commercialism about this, it will be shut down. It's just staggering that they cannot see how gauche it is. Royal historian Hugo Vickers criticised the Sussex's new website, stating, It goes against everything the Sussexes promised they would not do. They are trading on their royal titles and associations in every way you look at it. From the royal coat of arms used, to their Sussex titles, to the titles of their children, it doesn't matter what parameters you judge it on, the man on the street would identify those behind the website as part of the royal family. It is exploitative in the extreme. The coat of arms used by the Sussexes is also outdated and redundant, having five points on the label, signifying the grandchild of the monarch rather than three points, denoting Harry as the king's son. There is a strong argument that this shouldn't be used at all, regardless of the version. The Sussexes are trading on their royal connections, which was explicitly against the terms of their departure from the royal family. A source suggested to the Mirror that the error may have been deliberate, saying, Some theorised that having the prince's coat of arms would be too provocative, even for them. Angela Levin told GB News, The late Queen Elizabeth II said to them that she did not want them to use any royal titles to make money. They agreed to that. I suspect she thought that was a promise, and they're not sticking to it at all. They're using it 100% so they can make as much money as possible. Royal commentator Michael Cole told Talk TV, This will have gone down terribly badly at Buckingham Palace. We're not quite sure how they intend to use this new website, but it will be watched very, very closely, because any attempt to use it for commercial purposes will be frowned upon, certainly in this country. It's certainly just not on, and it's not what you do. I think it's another example of them being slightly tin-eared. If they want to build bridges, this is possibly the worst possible way they could do it, and it won't go down well. The first thing to be said about this is that it is illegal to use royal titles or the name of a royal residence for commercial purposes. Now, we will remember that when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex scooted off, first of all to Canada and then California, which was their intended destination all the time, perhaps Meghan's, it was made clear that they would retain the honorific titles, Her Royal Highness, His Royal Highness, these three letters that are very big in royal circles, but they were not to use them for any purpose. Will Buckingham Palace react? A source tells the Mail, Buckingham Palace may have its hands tied in taking action. The King has other things he needs to focus on at the moment, and the last thing His Majesty needs is another fight with his son. But this won't go down well at all. Back with more Palace in just a moment. Sky News Australia went after Harry and Meghan's travel arrangements as the couple travelled from Santa Barbara to Vancouver with a brief stopover before continuing to Victoria, encompassing a short 15-minute flight covering 63 
nautical kilometres. This trip has reignited discussions around the couple's environmental stance, given their history of using private jets while publicly supporting environmental causes. Notably, in October, the Sussexes faced criticism for taking a private flight to the Caribbean island soon after participating in a New York climate change conference. This particular trip was estimated to produce approximately 9.6 tonnes of CO2 emissions, a significant increase compared to commercial flight emissions. Critics have pointed to the couple's past actions, including a 2019 trip on a private jet to Elton John's residence in France, as examples of their environmental hypocrisy. Harry later addressed the controversy, stating at an ecotourism charity event that while he predominantly travels commercially, private flights are occasionally necessary for his family's safety. He acknowledged the need for balance and admitted, we can all do better in achieving sustainable travel. Omid Scobie, a close ally of the Sussexes, has defended Meghan's use of private jets, contending that she has never publicly engaged with environmental issues. Contrary to Scobie's claim, in 2019, Meghan and Harry voiced their support for Greta Thunberg and highlighted the urgent need for environmental conservation on their Sussex Royal Instagram page, stating, There is a ticking clock to protect our planet. We are jeopardizing this beautiful place we call home for ourselves and for future generations. We noticed several websites yesterday published articles answering the question about who is next in line of succession. That strikes us as very curious. As a listener to Palace Intrigue, you are likely familiar with at least the top of the list, starting with Prince William. But here's a recap. After William, it is his three children in order, George, Charlotte and Louis. The heir of George will eventually jump to next in line after George. The children are too young to serve as monarch, which would lead to a regency under the next in line, Prince Harry. From there, Harry's children are next in line, followed by Prince Andrew. Skipping down the list, 24th in line is David Armstrong Jones, Viscount Lindley, son of Princess Margaret. At 30, you'll find Prince Richard, Duke of Gloucester, cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, son of Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester, and Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester. The royals might want to keep William in bubble wrap. Katy Perry told Jimmy Kimmel about her meeting with the royals when taping a TV segment. She said, I brought my mother because, I mean, that's like the best gift you could ever give your mum. Katie explained she was supposed to take certain routes through the castle. I ran straight into them and I was like, oh, went the wrong way. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. Good times.